Good evening to you all. You have called me, invited me to speak on Carmelite prayer. That's what I was told on the phone. But then there is nothing called as Carmelite prayer as such. Maybe the Carmelite understanding of prayer, or maybe we are famous because our found, foundress or reformer, Saint, Saint Teresa of Avila, whose 500 years of canonization we celebrate this year, 400 years of canonization, she had something to give the church. And as she was made doctor of the church, a title was given by the Pope. No other saint has that title in the church. And the title is Saint Teresa of Avila, Teacher of Prayer. Saint Teresa of Avila, teacher of prayer. The church thinks a lot before making such statements and that is why he, she is called the teacher of prayer. Same way we have John of the Cross who is also called the mystical doctor and we have Saint Therese of the child Jesus who we call little flower most commonly. She is also a saint of the little way. And now we have a new saint who is also will be shortly a doctor, Saint Elizabeth of the Trinity, who is called the prophetess of the indwelling. All th this points to a deeper understanding of prayer in the Carmelite spirituality. And its origins come from 1 Kings chapter 19. To understand Carmelite prayer, or rather deep prayer or what we call contemplative prayer, a person has to be silent. So I invite all of you at this moment, just close your eyes. Take a comfortable posture and close your eyes. Become attentive to every sound you hear at this moment. The sound of the fan, the sound of the vehicles passing by, the sound of my voice, the sound of fireworks. These are physical sounds. Become also aware of every smell, taste and touch you feel at this moment. You have your clothes on. Does your body realize or you just become accustomed to them. Just as these sounds, physical and physical sensations approach you, in your person you have internal sensations. Your tensions, your worries, your anxieties, your pains, physical as well as emotional and spiritual. The mind, the heart doesn't allow us to be silent, but all these come in front of us. Why becoming aware of all these things which are real? Become aware of God's presence who is as real as these things. He is not a God of the past, not of the future, just now. He meets you now. And as you are in His presence, with your closed eyes, try to listen to the Word of God being read. There Elijah came to a cave and stayed in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said to him, What are you doing here? He said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. 
For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And God said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Just, you can open your eyes. Just like you, when you try to be silent, all these physical noises and all become louder. And same way your internal emotions, everything come out. And that is the time it becomes more and more difficult for us to touch God or rather experience God. Somehow the church insists on silence and yet our activity in some way shades out the silence. I will talk about it a little ahead. And that is why sometimes we think we have an encounter with God. We imagine we have an encounter with God. But sometimes that experience may not be real. And that is why it is essential to understand, first of all, what is prayer. Only then can you understand the depth. For example, if you take the Eucharist, when the Eucharist is exposed, or when the Eucharist is made available to the faithful, we say he is really, truly, substantially present. Is it not? Do you know what is the meaning of it? When I say real, true, substantial, we use this word very, very commonly. But do we know what do they mean? When I say God is real, it means God is not a symbol. The candle on the altar symbolizes God's presence. But it is not God. It is a symbol. Whereas the Eucharist is real. Same way when we use the word true. It means God is not something I imagine. I can imagine, no? My mind can imagine God. But the Eucharist is not an imagination or I am thinking God is there. God is really there. And the third thing, substantial. He is present in body. I can see him, I can touch him, I can taste him. Substance. And that is why real, true, substantial. And that is why it is very essential to know whether in prayer God is really present to me. That makes prayer true. And that is why many of them, once they experience prayer, they go into a deeper level of prayer. Now, to make you understand this, I will give a small story of, or a metaphor of Saint Teresa of Avila. She says, one who journeys on prayer, or has an interest in spiritual life, is like a caterpillar. Caterpillar. A caterpillar likes to eat, all the time eating and eating. It goes on the floor, on, you say, muddy ground, dirty ground, stale water, stale, uh, maybe waste of the things, 
and then it keeps eating and eating and eating. And what happens, most of the caterpillars will end up dying as caterpillars. Only those who raise their eyes up and see a silkworm flying or a butterfly flying will say, my cousin is flying, I am here. So it starts a journey upward. And it has to go to a time where it purifies itself and transforms itself in a cocoon or a chrysalis. After which it, get, it gets wings and those wings it can fly to only flowers. It tastes honey, not dirty steel water or mud. Only enjoys honey. Enjoys virtues. Flowers stand for virtues. It enjoys virtues. That is what is a deeper prayer. So St. Therese of Avila, on the online you will see so many grades of prayer, but she defines a few. First stage of prayer is called vocal prayer. Do you know what vocal prayer is? A prayer which is based on formula, fixed formula or sometimes could be spontaneous. So those what happens is your mouth speaks, your eyes or your hands in some way speak. If you use the rosary, your, high, your rosary is keeping you, not distract, uh, keeping you away from distractions by that mental act. Or you go around in a procession, it keeps you in that fervor. Otherwise, if you sit silently and say, say the rosary, somehow mind goes here and there. So your physical activity is used. You use words to say some expression. So what happens is sometimes the words are not meaningful. So it ends up that vocal prayer becomes somebody else's prayer I just read. Now how does vocal prayer become real prayer? First, become aware of who you are praying to. Are you praying to God? Are you praying to Jesus? Are you praying to Mary? Are you praying to St. Michael the Archangel or St. Anthony? Who are you praying to? That is how I begin prayer. Become aware first. Second, who is praying? What is my state right now before I begin to pray? Am I in the state of grace? Am I sinful? Why am I not going to confession? Why am I not reconciling with my brother? I have to become aware who I am before the Lord. If I don't have these two awareness, it is somewhat an imaginary prayer at times. Third, become aware of what words you are speaking. For example, if you say the Psalms, Psalms can be vocal prayers if you read them. But they can be deeper prayer when you pray it from the heart. What do I mean by praying from the heart? Those were written by psalmist as a flow, outflow from their hearts. Lord, like the deer pants, my heart pants for you. That same emotion and expression should be when I pray those words. When I say the Our Father, I have to know God is my Father. Only then vocal prayer becomes meaningful. The second grade of prayer is called meditation or reflection. We have different forms of prayer, sometimes to use uh, what you say Indian styles in, or maybe Eastern styles into prayer. Okay? I am not talking about the good or bad, but I am talking about what happens in meditation. In Christian practice we have the Jesus prayer as well as we have Lexio Divina. I, I think you must have heard about Lexio Divina. Yeah. Lexio Divina is spiritual reading. So first you read, then you reflect, then you pray, then you meditate and you, sorry, then you contemplate, that is let the Lord speak to you and finally you respond. So basically in this meditative prayer, there has to be word of God because God is involved. So what happens when I read the word of God? 
I have to first read what do I understand from it. What does God, I think God wants to tell me first. Second, I have to reflect how using imagination or your mind. So example, if suppose you are reading the passage of a Samaritan woman coming to Jesus and she is coming with her hair and wiping the feet of Jesus. You can imagine you are the Samaritan woman and say, I am sorry for these sins of mine. First. Second, you can also imagine you are any of the other characters. You could imagine you are Jesus also or the person who was standing around, Pharisee, anybody. And how you see the scene, what does God want, to, want me to learn? After doing this, the third step is talking to Jesus. Jesus, the Samaritan woman is like this, the Pharisee is like this, who am I? A little of conversation with the Lord. And finally, the fourth thing what happens is resolution. I make a resolution that today onwards I will change my life. That is the second level of prayer. The third level of prayer is the effective prayer. Prayer of the heart, some call it, because it can go a little advanced also. What you prayed just now, charismatic prayer, is can be prayer of the heart if it is truly in heart. But if it's only words, it goes into vocal prayer. It can be in either of these. So what do I mean by praying from the heart? Praying from the heart means I have experienced God and the love of God impels me to be with Him. Example, when I come to know the goodness of somebody, I will love to be there. It's not that I love to have that high with songs, but I am attracted by God who gives me all of these encounters. And that makes me come closer to Him. And in this stage, sometimes what happens is, we are only high at the emotion level. If there is no song, then no prayer. If there is no Alleluia, praise the Lord, God is not there. If that was the case, then you did not come here for God. You came for these words and things, singing. Sometimes it happens that our prayer, our style of prayer can handicap us to experience God. So this is what we call the prayer of the heart, when it could become emotions. The test to know whether it is real prayer is when your will is in alignment with God's will. Heart is where the will decides. So example, if you say, be kind to others, and you cannot forgive your own neighbor, then your will, God's will, doesn't align. So, in a way, you can test whether your prayer is real. The fourth prayer, the fourth and the last active stage, means what I can do, is called the prayer of recollection. The prayer of recollection. This is a special thing which started during the time of St. Augustine and it has moved in the contemplative circles. Now, what is prayer uh, of recollection? First of all, you have to believe, faith, believe with faith that God dwells within you. The kingdom of God is within you. Jesus is within you. You are the tabernacle because Jesus comes to you in the Eucharist. That awareness is the first thing which is required for this prayer. Second is, you do an act to remain in that presence. For example, when I receive Jesus in, first, in communion, after that for five minutes I know Jesus is there. Is it not? And that is the time sometimes some of us give our whole shopping list to him. 
give it is like some guest has come to meet us and instead of being with him we are interested more about our big list and that is the problem we face we are aware of god's presence but for us god's presence is not important our list is more important but this prayer prayer of recollection means i use a word any word i can use jesus i can use ave maria or something i just know when i say that word jesus i am only in the presence of god now example if i were not speaking and we were silent you could hear all the sounds more loudly is it not and the moment i start speaking you will be able to be attentive to my voice in the same way in the prayer of recollection when you are attentive to god you know god is present to you whatever be the noise or its side whether they be mosquitoes doesn't matter i know god is present this is what we call the purgative or the active prayer where man starts praying but then we have another two levels of prayer where god starts praying in us scripture says in the spirit of the lord makes me groan abba father the spirit prays within me and that is why we call it contemplative or passive prayer god wants to pray with me god wants to talk to me and that happens only when my will and his will begins to align when all i want is to do his will that is passive prayer and in that i can strictly divide it into two parts first is an illuminative prayer it illumines like you put light darkness goes away same way on a glass window if a light is put you will come to know there is dust so same way when god illumines you in this stage you will know that your soul is still not ready to meet jesus it still has roots of sin within you might say i forgive i i am not addicted to these things but more and more i see with the lord's presence he enlightens me he gives me knowledge of the virtues knowledge of scriptures and that opens out gives me light and finally third stage is unitive prayer god and me become one he transforms me into the butterfly and saint paul's word it is no longer i but christ who lives in me so this is what is prayer according to the carmelite tradition literally explaining to you what it is in the church not only carmelite everywhere what prayer is and that is what happened because since you want to know something deeper than the present charismatic prayer you have i am not saying one prayer is bad better than the other or one is worse than the other some people reach god closely even while saying the rosary and some in just without words saint therese of avila says if you love the father when you say our father you are already with the father other words don't matter that is prayer presence and that is why carmelites are people of god's presence every moment we believe we are in god's presence and that is the prayer of recollection and that is what i would like to talk to you about the prayer of recollection it has different names different understanding some call it liken it to vipassana and in the christian circles we call it kristasana or insight meditation but recollection is not fully that then we have another word called centering prayer i center but 
it is also not so much close to the prayer of recollection. Now, what is the difference is we have techniques for prayer and prayer. Sometimes we have the problem that we misunderstand techniques as prayer. For example, you have in Hindu custom the Nama Japa. For example, the prayer rosary. I repeatedly say these things and I think that is prayer. Those are the words which make you close to God, but they are not God. Same way, that is the misunderstanding we have with these words of t telling words. They are not basically prayer, but techniques. But the prayer of recollection is not a technique. It is a stage of prayer when I start recognizing God's presence. And that is what very beautifully this passage will make you understand. Elijah chapter 19. God was already speaking to Elijah, is it not? God told him to go to King Ahab, is it not? To then he condemned and said that there will not be a rain, it will be, be a drought. So God already was speaking to him. Now why did he have to go on the mountain to hear him in silence? Have you wondered that? God is already speaking to him. Then why does he need to again go on the mountain to speak to the Lord? That is something very mysterious about this. Just like the creation story has two versions, in that same 19 you have two versions. But you have to understand what happened to Elijah. Elijah was a simple man, given a vocation, and he lived it fully. But he also became a little oversmart. God told him only to talk about the rain. Now he puts a challenge to the priest of Baal or Baal. He wanted to so I am powerful. First I was struggling, but now I have God with me. I can do things. And after doing that, so many priests could not frighten him. Then one Jezebel comes and says, just like you did to my priest, I will do to you. And this man, what happens to him? He runs away into the desert. He goes and lies under a broom tree. A broom tree never gives flowers nor fruit. Okay? So a broom tree, he goes there. And what does he say? It is better that I die. It is better that I die. A man who is living in the presence of God immediately see how he transforms. And what does God do to him? He gives him, go sleep, Baba. Then sends a crow to give bread, a raven or crow. Give bread. Again, he says, go to sleep. Second time he wakes him up, gives him bread, now says, don't sleep, you begin your journey. But before that, very, very powerful thing we have to realize is when God asks him, what are you doing? He says, I am the only one who is zealous. Nobody else is zealous. So he was very much filled with pride. And pride makes us fall down before God. And that is why God tells him, go to the mountain. When he goes to the mountain, he goes into a cave and starts doing what I don't know. He was inside the cave and living there. Sometimes we get so attached with our worries, so attached with our sins. I'll give you an example. Just look at what sins you confessed in your last confession and the confession before. Have your sins reduced or increased? It means that you like to live with them. Every day you need half liter of milk. Every month I need those sins to survive. That is what is complacency sometimes. We have, we pray, we come for church, do everything, but our will and God's will doesn't align because we want to be a caterpillar. I want to enjoy my life 
and that is why teresa says the butterfly is nobody else but christ he lived our life but he raised up and you also can raise if you also go into the tomb go into the cocoon of your life and tell yourself my worries all these things i wear i eat don't matter what matters is god and to do that john the cross and theresa of avila talk about a stage of purification of senses and spirit so the senses talk about what you have now example i like chocolates i will say i will give up chocolates for lent but then i will take start eating something else and if suppose nobody is watching i take the chocolate but the carmelite saint say chocolates in themselves are not bad but the problem is your desire for them has become disordered if you see a diabetic cannot eat sugar but he has that desire unless that desire goes nobody can help him so that is the thing with purification i have to desire god more than things people and events my past some of us are so much attached to what happened in the past this happened my brother cheated me all we are so much attached with past if you live in the past god can meet, cannot meet you in the now if you are future always trying to be ah next year i will be this all plans you make plans but in the time of prayer if you are living in your future lord uh, only during time of prayer get my daughter married solve my family dispute only in the future again god will not meet you because he meets you now if you are meeting him in the past you are reading from the scripture and praying to a god who lived before you don't believe he lives now if you are talking about future you you are believing a god who is in the revelation only in the future not now but the prayer of recollection brings you to that reality i am human god wants to meet me to understand that first of all why does god want to meet you i understand now that you want to meet god is it not in prayer now tell me why does god want to meet you in prayer why should he come and spend time with you here very easy to say huh? very easy, very easy to say god loves us very easy to say huh? to ask that question means to start prayer if you want to know why god comes to meet me means you answer the question why i should come for prayer and that is answered in her book interior castle chapter 1 she says within you is a diamond of immortal diamond cannot be destroyed and such expensive diamond he comes to meet that diamond that is the only place he can meet you and what is that god created you in his image and likeness that image that likeness is his glory which is seen in your soul that is where you come to know who god is it is there only god can meet you devil can possess your body but not your soul that is where god meets us and that is why i make myself available to that presence that is the prayer of recollection i go within me purest there i don't desire anything but god my soul doesn't desire chocolates my soul doesn't de- desire to sin my body compels me because what we call the word concupiscence but because of my mind my mind my intellect my memory 
in some way thing. Now, example, if I look at a drunkard, if your father is a drunkard, two options. Either you will be a drunkard or you will hate drunkards. Hmm? That are the only two options. Or you can change your life and work for others also not to become drunkards. That's a different thing. But what I mean to say is, there in my heart do I meet God. Prayer takes a lot to explain, a lot to talk about. But I try to give you, in short, what exactly God wants you in prayer. And that is why he gives us the Holy Eucharist. His body. The highest form of prayer. The source and the summit of the Christian life. Why does the church say so? Which is higher? The Eucharist or your praise and worship? Why? Very good. Without doubt, Jesus is present. Here in your prayer, you can be imaginative, thinking, believing, but not truly understanding prayer. Now, why God comes, I told you. Now, how can you meet this God? It's like becoming friends. And if a young boy wants to become friends with a young girl, what will he do? First, he has to talk. Is it not? He has to converse with the girl or vice versa also. Then, to do that, first of all, he'll see whether my pocket has some money. I have to take her out, no? I have good clothes. Do I am dressed up? And this, is it not? That is our no normal inclination. Same way, if I need to God to make friends with God, then I also have to do all these things. And one of the biggest misconceptions we have, we think we are God's friends. We think we are, we, God is our friend. He wants to be our friend. I want to be his friend. But the problem is, I have not yet met him. I have not yet met him. Unless I go and say, my name is Regan, I know you are Jesus. Let's become friends. Just like this boy goes to that girl with taking so much courage, he will take a flower, this thing and all, and he has the risk of getting a slap as well. Yeah. So that risk of being rejected by God also is there. Many of us fear that God will reject us. That is why I say we cannot become saints. But the church believes all have the opportunity to encounter God. And for that journey, first of all, you have to purify your external senses. Your five senses, right? Five, sight, hearing, smell, taste, touch. But you also have two more senses, the imagination and fantasy. Whatever you have seen or something, your mind imagines. For example, if suppose you are thinking about fear, you will look at, maybe you saw an elephant on the head of somebody, and the tail, some imagination, that also. Also, imagination in prayer and family life. You are afraid that somebody is trying to kill you. You are afraid that you are afraid of death. All these fears have to go. And that becomes because Jesus is more powerful than them. That is my journey. After that comes interior journey. That is the worst. Many of us don't like silent prayer for this reason. Because when we are silent, we start speaking. What are our desires? For example, if you are a person who is lusty, you sit in prayer, even before the Eucharist, all thoughts of lust will come. If you are attached to movies, all you will see is movies, serials. You will try how much ever. That's why you need songs, you need words, but you cannot be silent. And that is the Jezebel in your life. That is the lightning, those thunder 
all those in your life. And you come to know when all of them are there, but you are listening to the spaces between. It is not lightning all the time. It thunders and stops. There is silence there. There's a storm. After the storm, there's silence. Same way, amidst all your worries, amidst all your desires, plans, future, past, there is God who is real and who is speaking to you. Only thing, I have to start listening to him. And that is prayer. And that is what I would like to introduce you on prayer. I think you should, in some way, start reading some material on Lexio Divina, contemplative reading of scripture, and then silent prayer. If you can get hold of the book Interior Castle by St. Teresa of Avila, available online, free of cost, Interior Castle, or the book of the dwellings, that God dwells with us. I think she will help you to pray. Before we end the session, let us just close our eyes. And in the same way, again become present to God's presence in our life. As we are present to Him, all our desires, all our dreams, all our feelings, all our past haunt us. Let us become attentive to that silence between these noises. The Lord reveals to you what is hindering you to encounter him. Ask the Lord the grace in that silence to help you to become attentive to that silent presence of God in your life. Ask him the grace that you be attentive to the same voice when you participate in adoration, in holy mass, in every prayer. And at this moment, pray for members of your family your parish community, your neighbors, and the church and world as the whole, that they also might encounter this living presence of God, that silent voice that speaks to us when we put our ears close to him. And as you are in his presence, I make the prayer of Paul for you. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened and pow with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, 
and to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God now to him who is able to do far more abundant abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever amen let us open our eyes and receive the final blessing the lord be with you and may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit